All right, uh, how's it going, guys? Uh, my name is Damani. I am a tech artist and 3D scanning specialist, uh, and I'm here with Turnio for their Turnio Plus tutorial series. Uh, so today we're gonna be taking a look at Blender, uh, specifically some of the just general uh, tips and tricks on how you can begin to uh, manipulate and edit uh, some of your 3D scan uh, mesh data. So the first thing you wanna do is launch Blender. Uh, so click that, open Blender. Uh, when you first launch Blender, you're going to be presented with this uh, default splash screen, right? So um, this screen is essentially prompting you to select what mode you want to enter Blender in and to create a new file. Uh, for most purposes, you just need the general workspace. So hit general. And then when you uh, first enter the workspace, you'll see that there are some uh, default assets here. There's a camera here your default cube that you could make a 3D model from, and uh, a light. Uh, for this tutorial, we don't really need any of these assets, so I'm just gonna box select, uh, select all those assets, hit delete, and remove them from the scene. Uh, now, uh, the first thing we're gonna do is import our 3D model. So you wanna go to File, Import, come down to OBJ. Uh, then for me, my uh, a lot of my scans are in my Downloads folder, so I hit Downloads, um, and then come to uh, Mailbox, OBJ, and then just take a little second to load. And you'll see that it drops your 3D asset uh, in your scene. You'll also see that the origin for the asset is way over here while the asset's way over here. Uh, 3D scan assets don't have any like relative uh, perspective or relation to the grid space, uh, like CAD models or models that are you know designed in the computer will have. Uh, so you need to kind of uh, first orient your model. Uh, so to do that, we're going to first come up to object. Make sure your object is selected. Come to object, uh, set origin, and then origin to center of mass surface. And that pulls that orange uh, origin point to the center of your, of your mesh. Now you can hit the N key and open up this panel, and you'll see that the, uh, under the item tab, you have location properties for your origin. So I'm just going to zero these all out. So just hit the field, type in zero, tab, zero, tab, zero, tab. And then uh, you can click out. And now your model is, uh, you know, uh, dropped to the zero, zero position of your grid. Now I want to try to do some of the transformation tools. So real quick to go over those hotkeys, you can hit G to grab and move your object. You can hit R to rotate and you can hit S to scale. Um, so I'm gonna hit R, and then after you hit R, you can use uh, Control, and that lets you snap at uh, five degree increments. So I'm gonna snap it to about here, click off, place it there. Then I'm gonna hit G for move, and you can see that you know when you first hit G, you're kind of just like free ball moving, you're just moving it any which way, right? Um, but if you constrain it, you can hit Z, and constrain it to the Z axis. So I'm gonna move it up till it gets to the floor, like right about there, click it. And I'm gonna zoom in, hit R to rotate, and I'm gonna hit shift this time, and that gives you this fine positional transformation. So now I'm gonna like, try to line it up on my floor, click it. Now I'm gonna use this rotation gimbal to, to float to some other uh, orthographic views, see how it looks. I'm gonna hit the Z to look top down. Um, and I'm gonna rotate it uh, till it's straight. I'm gonna hit shift. And I'm looking at, you know, I'm looking at the mailbox. I'm looking at the, you know, there's concrete under there. Um, so I'm gonna place it like that. Now, real quick also, I'm gonna show you. So I'm in this solid mode right now. If you wanna click material preview, you can actually see your, your scan textures. Maybe that can help you to orient your model as well. Uh, that texture information can, can give you more information. Like I can actually see the lines in the concrete here and I can align those lines uh, to my grid lines if I'm building a scene. Uh, and so uh, this scan was, you know, captured with Turnio Plus. I'm, I'm an early beta tester as well. Uh, and for my beta testing series and, and for my now mobile scanning series, I've been focusing on these, you know, graffiti covered uh, subjects. So this is just, you know, a mailbox that was completely bombed with graffiti that I thought was really cool. Um, a nice subject for 3D scanning. 
uh, okay, so now you have your model uh, oriented in your scene. Uh, the next thing you want to do is start editing some of the mesh. Uh, so you want to enter, enter edit mode. So you can do that by hitting tab. Tab is how you enter edit mode. And when you first enter edit mode, you can see that it's a bunch of points. All these points are selected. Uh, you might not want the texture information right now, so you can switch back to solid mode. Uh, and you can see all these points that comprise your mesh, right? Um, so you can click off to deselect. You can also come up to the select menu here. You can see A is the hotkey to select all. Alt A is the hotkey to select none. And Control I is the is the invert hotkey. We can go over that in a bit. Um, so let's say I want to remove the floor. I don't want the floor anymore. I could come to the side and just box select it and select my floor out. But I'm going to show you the the circle select tool. So if I use the W key, I can switch to different selection tools, right? So now I'm on the circle select. Uh, the circle select has this radius parameter, so I can bump that up to, let's say, like around 68, sure. And that gives me like this bigger brush. I'm also actually using a pen in real life. I, I recommend a pen uh, for a lot of mesh-based editing. Um, it really makes sense for this kind of brush tool where I can brush over the surface like this. And when I brush over, you can see that I selected a bunch, but there's all these black areas too. Why didn't I select those areas? Why didn't those areas get selected? That happens uh, because you're not enabling uh, this right here, which is the X-ray mode. Uh, so X-ray mode, what that allows you to do is it allows you to select through. What does that mean? Well, uh, these black areas essentially were occluded. They were blocked by something, other vertices, you know, raises and dips in the floor. Um, so if I want to select all those areas, everything that's completely under my brush, you can use uh, the X-ray mode. That also lets you literally select through things where I can, you know, select an area here. And now I've selected all the way through the model. Uh, actually, I'm sorry, I don't have X-ray enabled. Enable X-ray, select here, and you can see I've selected now the side of the mailbox, the floor here. Uh, you could select, you know, literally the floor underneath with X-ray. So you want to enable X-ray when you're doing some of these kinds of selections where, you know, pieces can be occluded. There's a lot of points in here. You can miss some. Uh, X-ray really helps to alleviate that issue. Um, so I'm going to, I think I'm going to uh, speed up this next part, but you're just, you're just going to watch me select the floor. I'm just brush selecting everything. Oh, and real quick also uh, to select and add to your selection. So every time I select, it's, you know, um, starting a new selection. If I want to add to the selection, I have to hold shift. If I want to remove from the selection, I, I hold control. Okay. So again, real quick, I'm just going to select this floor and then we can move on to the next, the next phase of this tutorial. Okay, so really quickly there, I just went through and, and selected all the faces. I made sure, make sure you're on face select mode and select all the faces, uh, it doesn't matter. I mean, so if you if you select in points, you can still switch your mode and, and change the selection to face, but you wanna be in face selection mode for something like this. So I've selected all the faces in the floor that I, I, I don't want. Um, so now I'm gonna hit the delete key and then uh, scroll down to faces. And just like that, you've removed the floor. Um, again, there are, you know, faster ways that you can approach that. You could have just gone to the side and box selected. You know, I even missed a piece here. So I'm just going to uh, switch to my box select tool. Box select uh, this area over here. Hit delete. Faces if you miss anything. Um, but yeah, that's how you can quickly remove the floor. Uh, so now I want to show you how you can uh, fill holes. So obviously uh, removing the floor like that introduced holes to all the bottoms of the feet here that were connected to the floor. Um, also underneath the mailbox where I couldn't have scanned has a giant hole in it. So let's say I wanna close these holes. So you hit two, remember it's one, two, three, uh, points, edges, faces. 
So I'm going to switch uh, to edges. And then I'm going to uh, hit Alt, hold, hold Alt, and select uh, my edge loop. So that's the whole loop. Then you hit F to fill, and that fills uh, that region with faces. Uh, now you can um, hit F3, and you can type in triangulate. And so this, these faces are an end gone, right? But if you hit triangulate faces now, now you can um, add uh, edges and triangulate those faces. Um, you can also then right click and subdivide. All right. And then I'm going to hit F3 again. I'm going to use the decimate modifier, on that selection, decimate geometry. And then now I can kind of control uh, the size of those faces in there. So I kind of want the geometry to match the surrounding area a little bit. Let's say I'm happy with that. Uh, last thing I want to try to do, I'm going to hit S to scale it. And then you can hit Z uh, to, to kind of scale it in like that and flatten it out. So I'm going to flatten it out like that and then hit G and Z and push it up a little bit like that. And that's how you can kind of patch the bottom like that. And with the same approach, you can fix all these feet. Uh, but uh, real quick, when I want to show you some more tools you can use to, to fix these holes. Um, so Alt again, and then click, select an edge loop. Then you can scale and hit Z to kind of straighten these out and make them coplanar. And that can help when you're closing holes so that uh, nothing kind of penetrates through. You can see that this this, this part is still lower than the rest. Um, you can also uh, use, you can go to Mesh, uh, I think, yeah, Transform, and then to Sphere. And then you can kind of circularize those edges. You can see that. That can help to make a cleaner uh, patch when you do patch it. You can also, you know, again, transform those. So I can hit Z and bring those edges down. And then hit F and patch it like that. So there's all kinds of ways that you can, you know, manipulate these edges and patch your holes. I'll also show you uh, one last thing to kind of end this tutorial, uh, this kind of a hole. So those are holes, we looked at holes where it's actually a hole in the mesh, right? But there are also holes here where uh, it's part of the mesh. So I think these kinds of holes get confusing for people. Um, this hole, uh, to patch it, you really need to delete more geometry. So I'm going to hit the W key, and I'm going to switch to this brush. And then I'm going to, uh, let's make sure I'm in face select mm -hmm. mode. So hit three. I'm going to brush over um, this whole edge here. Um, make sure you use shift to add to your selection. So just brush over this edge. And you can see that I, I selected some stuff I don't want to select out here. So you can use control again to deselect and remove these uh, areas from your selection. Um, you could also grow and shrink your selection. You can use, I think it's control plus to grow the selection and control minus to shrink the selection. So those are you know, tools you can use to select your area. Now that my area is selected, I wanna also uh, turn, off the, turn on the um, material, uh, the texture for this part. So you can see that there's a good part here, this part that I don't wanna erase. So I'm gonna try to preserve as much as this, um, as much of this as possible uh, on both sides. Anything that's good that I want to keep. All right, so I, I've selected that ring in there. I'm going to hit delete uh, faces. And I have a hole now on both sides. That was the goal. So now I can actually patch these. So remember, you want to go to, uh, hit two to go into edge selection. Again, for this, you don't need the texture on. It gets, you know, too much information. Uh, switch to the tweak brush. I'm hitting W switch my brush to the tweak brush, hit Alt, and then select uh, this edge loop here. 
hit F and that fills the faces. You can use the F3 search and search for triangulate faces. Uh, now you've added more geometry um, or you've, you've, you know, split, it was an end on and now you split it. Uh, now you can right click and subdivide. And then again, F3 and the decimate modifier. And now you can kind of uh, control uh, the resolution of those new faces so that they match the rest of the area. Okay. And again, I'm going to do the same thing for this other side here. Hit Alt, select the loop, F, close the faces, F3, uh, triangulate to uh, split that end gone, right click, subdivide, and then uh, you want to use the decimate modifier and try to get that resolution to, to match uh, the surrounding area. And that's how you can patch a hole like that. So for this tutorial, I just wanted to go over some of the basics and how you can uh, patch holes in your geometry. Uh, just you know, looking at the texture, filling holes. Um, these are some of the basic tools that you can use for mesh editing and preparing your models for render or 3D printing or animation. Okay. So thank you so much. Uh, hope to see you guys next time.